Hello everyone, and welcome to episode number 19 of the Building Strength Podcast. Can't believe it's episode 19 already. So, today we got... Hello everyone. And welcome to episode number 19 of the Building Strength Podcast. Today we got some Q&A. I got three really good questions here. And um, just excuse me if I'm breathing real heavy or I sound stuffed up because I am. Just coming off the tail end of this like cough, sore throat, I guess. That's why they say to have backup podcast episodes. Guess what? I don't have any backup podcast episodes. All right, so. Well, first of all, don't forget the sponsors. Sponsored by the Loving Kindness Meditation. As always, just think of two people in your head, and in your head, just say, just wish for happiness, wish happiness for them. So that's our sponsor, shout outs to the Loving Kindness Meditation. If you guys want a discount code, there is none. All right, so how long, number one, how long? should I stick to a program for? This person was talking about um, a training program, but this also applies to say a nutrition program or a certain diet protocol. How long should I stick to a program for? Most programs come in the form of six weeks, eight weeks and 12 weeks. But it's generally like the standard way to put together a program or sell a program. There are some that are four weeks as well. And four weeks is okay. I would say for stick to a program for at least four weeks. So at least one month, whether that's a training program or a certain nutrition protocol. The reason being you want to stick with this for at least four weeks so that you can actually see some progress or maybe any changes in how you feel. It's going to take about four weeks to know that, like, does this make me feel better? Um, Does this help me? Do I like doing this? So stick with something for at least four weeks because, and Ideally more, ideally longer. Six weeks is a good mark, I find. Eight weeks is good as well. So you just want to stick to something so that you can see some appreciable progress. Like if you, um, if you don't stick with it for too long, you don't actually know if you made progress on it. And then you don't actually know if that worked. And because you don't know that, then you actually didn't learn anything. So for me as a coach, um, when I dish out training programs or even nutrition, I mean, I don't have as much experience with the nutrition, but in terms of training, for me, like when I give people a, say a squat program, and it's going to be for the next eight weeks or 12 weeks or even four weeks. It's because I've done it before. So I did it. I stuck with it and I learned, did I like it? Did I like that rep scheme? Um, was it enjoyable? Did I make gains off of that rep scheme? That kind of thing. And then the only reason I can give it to other people now is because I tried it myself. So for you personally, um, 
you just have to try certain programs, certain training programs, certain nutrition protocols, just so you know, and that you have that under your belt and you can always go back to that. So for me personally, I have about four to five different like rep schemes that I kind of cycle through in terms of the squat, the deadlift, the big lifts really. And this is something I do for my clients as well. Like I'll give them, and also it depends what they need at that point in time, right? So say someone needs to really like build up their strength, build up their technique. It's just going to be nice and simple. Let's just do like five sets of five at something that's not too, too heavy. This is going to help with form. This is going to help with technique. Just get them to practice, right? Or in a more extreme case, Say they're a beginner, I'll give them five sets of 10. And it's like, just practice. Go 50, 50 out of 50 in terms of perfect technique. And then I have others where maybe the person's technique is really good now and we want to start touching a bit heavier weights. So what I've really been enjoying is like, we'll do 10 reps, eight reps, six reps, four reps, and then two reps. So over the course of five sets, that gives them an opportunity to touch something heavier. And this will just get them used to that heavy weight. And after the two reps, we'll drop back down. And we'll do some volume work to actually build that strength, right? So the point being is that the longer you stick to certain programs, and the more you can take away from it, whether that's how much progress you made, or whether that was enjoyable and how you think you can apply it to yourself in the future again. And if you're a coach, how you can apply it to your clients or your athletes. So one of my favorite squat programs, probably my favorite because I actually stuck to it, is um, the cowboy method. So that's a 12 week program. It requires you to squat three times a week. There is like the first day is a very big volume day. It sucks. Um, second day is just a lighter front squat day. Third day is a like heavier, higher intensity day. So you do like less reps, but more weight. So for me, that's a program that I really enjoy and in my head when I have the mindset of being like, yeah, I want to get my squat up. I always just go back to that program because I know it works for me. I know it's worked for me in the past and I know that I enjoy it and I'll stick to it. So for you guys out there, this is especially true for nutrition as well. You got to stick to something so that you can actually see appreciable progress on it. So question number two, I posted a picture of my, what my journal looks like, what my morning journal looks like. And I've gotten a bunch of questions about it. So my current journal process, I aim to do it every day. That doesn't always happen. I probably average about five out of seven days. And in terms of timing, I do it in the morning because I'm a morning person. Like right now I'm recording this. It's Wednesday morning, 7.30 AM. I didn't really have anything to wake up for this morning. Like Wednesday is my morning off, but I woke up, looked at the time and it was 6 AM. So here we are. So I usually do the journal in the morning because as I said, I'm a morning person. If you're a night owl and you prefer to do it in the evening, I highly recommend that. Do just do whatever you will stick to. So my journal process has been teared down to just three sections now. It used to be a lot longer and that kind of put me off 
of doing it because it took so long, right? So here I am. It's, um, it's now just three sections. I've got my daily task. I try to list, I try to keep it to five things only. So I list five things that I want to accomplish today. Um, the reason I keep it to five or that I try to keep it to just five is because if I list like eight to 10 things, it's really overwhelming and chances are none of it will get done. So I just try to keep it to five big things. So for example, today's daily five is record podcast number 19, break down the video clips so that I can post it on Instagram. Second task is um, three Instagram posts throughout the day. Number three is a blog post. So this is just something I started recently because I don't have that consistency with the blog post. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna dish out one blog post every day. Number four is train. So today I'm doing military press, um, some kind of horizontal rowing and more conditioning work. Number five is work on writing the training program that I need to write. I'd like to make a PDF slash ebook for a training program that I want to create. So those are my daily five. I just, again, I keep it at five so it's not too overwhelming. And I just check them off as I go. And it feels really good to check them off. Second section is my why section. It took a while to figure out my whys and they kind of change here and there. But currently I have three whys, three big whys. And what this does is it basically, I'm basically recommitting to my goals every morning. And this will just keep, it's more of a mindset thing as in these are the things I'm working towards and these are the reasons why I'm doing this. And the why just kind of, it's like a guiding light and it keeps you grounded as in, so I didn't really feel like doing this podcast or I didn't feel like training today or times get hard, like maybe something happens with the fam or whatever, right? The whys just kind of keep you in check and remind you of why you're doing those daily five things. In Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, the say, the, his quote is something like, the person who has a strong enough why can withstand any how. So every morning I write down my big whys. Um, a key thing for the why section is to write it in present tense. So I am versus I want or so it's always in present tense. So for example, my first one is I am living the life I choose and am mastering my craft. So it's always got to be in present tense. Um, it's just like you're already doing it rather than this is something you're striving to do. You're already doing it on a daily basis. Section number three is the lessons and gratitude section. So for this one, it's just like things I've picked up during over the course of the day or things I'm grateful for. So like, I didn't write this down, but I'm grateful for having Wednesday morning off so that I can wake up and chill, have my coffee, take care of the shit that needs to be taken care of at home because I'm not at home that much. So, and then today's lesson is I was reading a chapter of the 10 X rule by Grant Cardone. Highly recommend that book. He wrote that, let me get the direct quote right here so I don't butcher it. Pulling it up right now. 
So he wrote, almost every problem people face in their careers and other aspects of their lives, such as failed diets, marriages, and financial problems, are all the result of not taking enough action. So that's, um, this is just a section I like to list things that like kind of keep you going, um, keep you motivated, keep you in check. So these are the three simple sections that I do now. This takes less than five minutes. Um, it used to be a lot longer and now that I look through my journal, I didn't do any entries in March at all. I kind of just fell off the train. I did it every day in January, February, and March I just said, fuck it, I'm not doing this anymore. So then I teared it down. So I used to do like a schedule. I used to do like the why section, and then there would be 12 week goals that I rewrote every day, which is kind of good. Then there's like a wins section, a lessons section, a gratitude section. So I kind of teared it down and made it my own. Um, so one thing I recommend for you is just to figure out what is helpful for you in terms of the things you like to include in your journal and what's important to you. So again, I have three sections, the daily five task. Sometimes it's more than five, sometimes it's less than five. Then I have the why section. And lastly, I have the lessons and gratitude section. So that's my morning journal. I like to do this because it really, it helps me organize my day. It feels good to check off the daily task. Like these are things I already know I have to do. Like sometimes it's like train, all clients very well or run amazing training sessions or like it can be very minuscule tasks like you don't have to have massive projects every single day so like sometimes it's just like do do three loads of laundry because i have like four piles of clothes on the ground or um vacuum the house you know, shit like that. It doesn't have to be massive undertakings. It's more so like building momentum. So I made a post about this on Instagram. It's like, if I hit all five of these today, which I will, because I've already done one of them and I'm in the process of doing the second one, and it's not even 8 a.m. So if you hit all five in one day, dude, that's five things you accomplished today. When's the last time you accomplished five things in one day? You might have done it, but consciously, now you're going to do it. And then over the course of a week, that's 35 things. Like when's the last time you accomplished 35 things in one day? Sorry, in one week. So it's just building momentum. And then over the course of a month, that's 140 things. It just feels good. Building momentum, creating consistency, and just taking action. So, and then over the course of a year, it's like 1,500 things, maybe more. So here actually, in my phone that I'm looking at right now, in Google Keep, you can make checklists, right? So I started, for a time I did the daily five, I think in, Feb in March, because I didn't keep the journal, I did the daily five on my phone because this was something that helped me a lot. So it shows you how many ticked items, like how many things you checked off. And right here it says 223 ticked items. So that was 223 things that I got done that I planned and wanted to do. So it's just a mindset thing. It feels good. You feel good about yourself. You're like, yeah, I'm getting shit done. So for me, it's really just about keeping myself accountable. Like if I look at it one day and I haven't checked any of it off, I'm like, okay, I fucked up today. What happened? Why did I do that? And just because you list a certain number of things doesn't mean you're always going to hit them. Like most days I hit maybe four out of five things, like three out of five, but it's still better than zero. It's always still better than zero. 
So that's what my journal process looks like right now. I really enjoy it. Um, for me, it's helped me a lot. I started doing this about maybe a year ago now, on and off, you know, always on and off. Some weeks I might hit two out of seven, some weeks I might hit seven out of seven. Doesn't matter, as long as you do it, guys. All right, last thing I wanna talk about. Excuses. Oh my God, so as a trainer, I hear so many excuses in one day. Like yesterday I heard so many and I was like, I came home and I was disgusted. I was like, disgusted, completely disgusted with everyone and their excuses. biggest excuse being, and I wrote a blog post about this this morning, I don't have time. That's the worst fucking excuse ever. Like, are you fucking kidding me? I don't have time. You're basically blaming everyone and everything but yourself. So here's a solution. Just please don't ever say I don't have time ever again. Instead, what you can say is, I did not make time to do it, or that's not a priority right now. Those are the two only acceptable things. For myself, I don't really say, I say I, don't make, I didn't make time, and I say a lot of times it's just like, it's simple, I didn't want to do it, or I'm being a bitch, and again, I didn't want to do it. So for myself, those are the two acceptable things that I let myself say. I didn't want to do it, or I'm being a bitch and I didn't want to do it, and I didn't make time. Just like, the fact that you think it's acceptable, or people think it's acceptable to say, I don't have time. It's like you're trying to fool me, but really you're trying to fool yourself into thinking that you're such a busy and productive person that you couldn't get something done. And I personally don't take offense to... So let me give you some context. Say I give um, one of my clients homework in terms of, okay, let's do two sets of 10 clamshells to improve your um, lateral glute strength. And this will help with your knee caving in when you squat and you deadlift. So this will just help you squat more and deadlift more. And, and then, so two sets of 10 for clamshells, that takes probably two minutes, two minutes. Um, and I personally don't take offense to the person not doing the thing that I gave them to do. Like, I really don't care about that. What, what bothers me more is the excuse of, I didn't have time to do it, or I'm so busy, or life is hectic right now. Come on guys, life is always hectic. Life is always going to be hectic. So, I think what I've been trying to do with like the homework I'm giving people to do, the homework I'm giving my clients to do, to inevitably help them reach their goals, right? What I've been doing in the last month or two is like keeping this homework so small and minuscule, like making it such a small time commitment that there's literally no excuse. So two sets of 10 on each side for clamshells. Doesn't take very long. Like you, everyone has two minutes. Or even push-ups, three sets of max push-ups. Oh, I don't have time. Dude, a set of max push-ups takes like a minute. Unless you're an absolute beast and you can just do push-ups for like an hour, then yeah, maybe I would have given you something else. But 
a set of max push-ups for most people is going to take less than a minute. So three sets throughout the day is three minutes. And then, so that's for, that's mainly for guys. I give the three sets of max push-ups. And then for, and then I might give, uh, I gave one of my girls two sets of squats. I think I said two sets of 25 body weight squats. Not much. So what I've been doing is like a small time commitment or giving homework that's a small time commitment. So I have two clients, they're trying to lose more fat and they only train with me twice a week. And I said, okay, you live in a building, right? Okay, here's the deal. You have stairs in your building, right? Okay, set the timer. I don't care when you do this, just do it. Set the timer on your phone and just fucking run up those stairs and run down those stairs as much as you can for five minutes. Boom. Five minutes, you're drenched in sweat, you feel good about yourself, you're one step closer to your goal. So it's just making, and even with the journal, same thing, right? I've teared it down to such a small time commitment that there is literally no excuse for me not to do it. So guys, the excuse of I don't have time pisses me right off. I take it personally. I don't take it personally that you didn't do the thing that I asked you to do that would inevitably help you. I don't care about that. I care more about the fact that people are not taking accountability for their own actions, their own time, basically their own life. So main takeaways today, I'm going to end it right there because I'm, this is like the most like pissed off I've been in a long time. Just like the amount of excuses I got yesterday. Oh my God. Life is crazy. Life is hectic. I know my life is hectic too. <laughs> like shit. I, I'm still showing up. I'm still getting it done. So it's just about building this mindset of like accountability, responsibility for your own actions. So main takeaways for today, stick to the program, stick to any training or nutritional program for at least four weeks, if not four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks and 12 weeks. Um, journal process. If you're interested in starting a journal, I highly recommend it. I really enjoy doing it and it helps me a ton. So journal process, definitely do that. Keep it short, keep it concise. And then lastly, just stop saying, I don't have time. Try instead of saying, I didn't have time to work out. Say working out isn't a priority right now or I didn't have time to do those clamshells. Clamshells are not a priority or I didn't make time for it. Whatever. That's 10 times better than saying I don't have time. I'm going to leave it at that mainly because my nose is stuffed. I feel like I'm breathing heavily and I'm pissed. <laughs> so as always guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for checking in. Thank you for subscribing. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned a bunch. And you know what's the weirdest feeling as well? When you're pissed off at someone and you wish happiness for them. It's the weirdest feeling. Highly recommend it. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that. Episode number 19 in the books. Until next time, peace.